Hi, I'm really glad to be able to share with you again. And I want to talk today about God's leading. God, God leads us and guides us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And I also want to say that sometimes things seem to be about one thing, but they're really not about that at all. And it's something that I've been learning. I can't say I've learned it because God continues to do it in my life. For instance, we needed a car repair and I went to Sears Automotive and I thought I was there for the car repair. But turns out I was really there for a different reason. So the TV was on in the waiting room and there was one woman in the room as well as myself. And so we were just watching what was on. And I think there was something on the news and it was something negative. This was a while ago, but there's always something negative on the news. <clears throat> and I remember making a comment to her about, boy, the world sure is, has a lot of negative things happening. And she said, yeah. And I felt a nudge to go ahead and share about my sister's story. I found at that time in my life, I was willing to share it, and I think it was because I was still working through the whole idea of her being. She, at first she was missing, and then we found out she really wasn't missing. She had been killed, and she was the victim of domestic violence. So that news story had something about violence in it. And I said to the woman, you know, the, just the world, the way the world's going, you just, just so negative. And, and she listened. And then I shared about how you really never know what people have gone through. And I shared the story of my sister. And she listened so intently. And then she said, I was in an abusive relationship. And then I, it was my turn to really listen as she shared. And the really exciting thing about that day for me was I told her that sometimes I, I used to really struggle with the idea, why didn't Peggy tell me sooner? That was a big question in my mind that remained unanswered. And she gave me insight because she shared why she hadn't told family members about it. She said she was ashamed. She was talking about herself. And then she said, or maybe she thought somebody else might get hurt. She didn't want to involve somebody. And I can't believe how I actually got some peace from that because I used to wonder, you know, is it something I could have done? Is it something I could have just engaged her in conversation? And it really wasn't that way. I had talked to her two days before she disappeared. So just that chance meeting with that woman showed me that it isn't always about what it seems like it's about. It wasn't about our car. It wasn't about Sears. It wasn't even about what we were watching on TV. It's about people. And maybe she needed to share her story. I know I needed to hear it. We live in a society right now that doesn't even engage in eye contact. Even before COVID, I found that when I would go to a store some of the cashiers would not have eye contact. And I really wondered about it because years ago I was a cashier and I, if anything, I was a chatty cashier and I talked to my customers. But people don't look you in the eye like they used to. And maybe cashiers don't because they don't get looked in the eye. I believe that we're supposed to be lights. God says we're lights and you don't hide a light under a bushel. God says that he will guide and direct our steps. 
In Psalm 32, 8, God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. I want to tell you a story about when God nudged me and I was on the phone. This is even before, I, I think it's before caller ID or maybe we didn't have caller ID. I just remember being on the phone and having this feeling that I, it was more than a feeling. I feel like the Lord was saying, don't hang up. This woman had called our home and said she was looking for Pete Peterson. I thought it was funny because Mike told me that his dad used to be called Pete and his dad's name was Carl, but he said it's because his last name was Peterson. So I stayed on the phone with this woman because I felt like that's what I was supposed to do. And I listened to her as she told me she's looking for Pete Peterson and she seemed intent on, on somehow contacting him. Well, giving her some time, she was able to relay to me that she was having a party for her husband, and it was really important that she get a hold of their friend Pete, who they hadn't seen or talked to, I guess, for years. They just lost touch. The more I gave her time, the more I, I got to hear what was really behind her desire to contact Pete Peterson. You see, her husband had cancer and she was gonna have this surprise party for him. She just thought it would really mean a lot to him if she could find this friend of theirs. So I asked her if she had checked on the internet and she said she doesn't know very much about the internet but her daughter did try and was unable to contact anybody there. And so I, I found myself volunteering. I, you know, I can, I can do a little checking for you. And she said, oh, that would be great. And so I let her talk some more. And then I, I felt like I was to ask her if I could pray for her. And I find a lot of times Christians will, Christ followers will say, you know, can I pray for you? But they don't do it right then. But I thought, you know, I bet it would feel good if somebody just did it right then. So I said, do you mind if I pray for you? And she said, no. So I, right there on the phone, I prayed and asked God to somehow give her wisdom about where this friend might be and if it would please you, Lord, could we find this friend of theirs? And I just committed it to the Lord. And she said to me when I was done, no one has ever prayed with me like that before. Thank you so much. And I remember after that, that I, I was talking with a friend. I'm going to say it was two days later, and I was telling her the story of the looking for Pete Peterson. And she said, I know a Pete Peterson. Well, I was pretty descriptive as far as what she was looking for. And this woman's name was Shirley. And Shirley said that Pete spells his name, they spell their name, P-E-T-E-R-S-E-N. I believe that's what she said. And um, so this friend of mine said, well, I know a Pete Peterson. And I said, well, how does he spell his name? And she told me S-O-N. And I said, well, then it can't be him. And so I, I listened as she told me the little bit that she knew about this guy, Pete Peterson. I continued to pray about it. And then I decided to ask my friend, why don't, could you give me his number anyway? I mean, I know it's probably not him, but could you? And she said, sure. So she gave me the number and there I am on the phone with somebody I don't know, but I, I just felt led to help this elderly woman. And I'm talking with this guy, and finally I tell him about Shirley and her husband, and he says, that's me. I know them. 
Well, I was thrilled. I thought, oh my gosh, Shirley's going to be so happy. So I called Shirley and I told her, and she was overjoyed. And she kept saying over and over, you are my angel. You are my angel. And I said, I'm no angel. I, but I really wanted to help you, so I'm so glad. And so what she did was she wanted to meet me. So we agreed to meet at a McDonald's, and my husband dropped me off, and I sat there, and in walks this woman with a gift bag, and she's looking at a couple of people, and I, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if that's Shirley. And if she made her way over to me and looked at me and said, are you Anne? And I said, yeah, I am. And she said, can I give you a hug? So she gave me a hug, and then she sat down, and we talked for a little while. And she told me that they were able to have Pete come over to the party, and it was such a surprise for her husband. He was so happy. And she just couldn't stop thanking me for it and said, again, you, you are my angel. <laughs> I just laughed. And I said, I was happy to do that. And... I told her that I'm a Christ follower, and I felt like God was telling me to stay on the phone with you, just like he was telling me to pray for you. So she said, well, I hope this is okay, but I want you to know that I got something for you. And she took from her gift bag, she took this present out, and I sat there and I unwrapped it, and I got the most beautiful, beautiful angel that you ever can imagine, who now sits in my china cabinet and reminds me how important it is to listen when God whispers to us. Because all I did was listen to God when he said, don't hang up. I love my angel. I also want to tell you a very sad story. I was in Walmart one day, and there's probably Walmart probably has a million stories, right? Well, I I felt like asking. Sometimes all I do is start small talk if if the girl is is ringing up my purchases, and there was this woman and. She, she started talking to me, and then I said, you look tired. And she said, oh, I am tired. I'm very tired. You see, and then she opened up, and she shared that she's afraid. She's afraid somebody is going to break in. She just doesn't feel safe anymore. So I told her about it. Um, could I pray for you? And she said, Absolutely. And she said, I, when I looked at you and your daughter, I thought maybe you knew God. And I thought, wow, I, that was quite the statement. But I continued to listen as she told me the story. And after she was finished, she said she had children, but she didn't feel safe. And I looked into it and asked her for her email, first of all, and would it be okay if I emailed you? Oh, yes, I would love that, she said. And so she emailed me back one day when I said, how are you doing? I'm praying for you. Um, it was just a short email I sent, and she said, I just knew that, that you knew God. I just knew it. And then she told me that... Um, that she still hadn't moved. She doesn't know if it was going to work out. I told her about an organization that might be able to help her, and that was the extent of it. I'm sad to say that a year later, I was watching the news, and it talked about a really sad story about a woman whose body they found in a dumpster, and her name was Tequila. And it turned out it was the same woman that I had prayed for and tried to encourage. And she told me I did encourage her, but I didn't know that, that you could meet somebody and they could have this huge story. Because you, don't, you can't always tell what somebody's gone through in their life when you meet them or even see them. 
on the street. We don't know that, but God knows it. God knows what's going on with all of us. I want to share a, a poem called Yesterday because I think people are, are looking for connection. I think people feel isolated. And even a smile or just saying, you look tired or has it been busy like this? Those little lines can really encourage people that are just seeing people as numbers, more numbers to get through before they can punch out and go home. We need to be the lights that God says we are. Sometimes all it takes is just a few words. But this is a poem entitled, Yesterday. Could we go back to yesterday? When people seem to find a way to visit friends for hours of talk or simply chatted on a walk? Could we go back to simpler times all tucked away inside our minds? I miss the world that used to be where I knew you and you knew me. We don't know what the stories are of the people that we meet. Sometimes they're hoping somebody asks. We can be that person. I don't believe in coincidences. And then when I do give somebody the chance to share their story, I find that they don't believe in coincidences either. So whatever God's path, whatever path God has for you today, I, I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is either. But commit yourself to God because he knows what's in store. I had a friend once, I remember saying to my daughter, you know what, I think we need to just go to Walmart. I just, we need to go to Walmart. And it's like, I didn't have a shopping list in mind or anything, but she said, sure. And we took off and went to Walmart and I just felt strongly about it. And there in the store, I turned the corner and ran into a friend that I had not seen for a while. And she said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. And then she shared a prayer request that she had that was really heavy on her heart. I didn't know that, but God knew. Have you experienced times in your life when you needed an encouraging word and God somehow sent you that word through somebody you know, through somebody you didn't know? I really love sharing my stories I really love sharing God's word with you or the poetry that he gives me. But I love, love, love it when you guys share with me how something touched you or how you just needed to hear something that God had me share with you. So please feel free to leave a comment and I will answer the comments that I'm given. And if you need prayer, please feel free to say that in the comments, and I will pray for you. I hope that today is a really good rest of the day for you. Thank you for watching or listening.